Coco is in the kitchen with me today. It's half term and we thought we would show you how to make Halloween gingers. So welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. Please do remember to subscribe and to ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos. The more the merrier, so do spread the word as well. Coco and I have been making gingers for years, haven't we? And I think it's really good to get children involved cooking in the kitchen from a young age. Don't worry about the mess because you can always clear it up. But the more children play with food, experiment, the keener they are to try different things. So not only does Coco bake with me, but she cooks a lot of savoury things as well. And I think it helps, doesn't it, be more adventurous. Mm -hmm. Right, let's get going, darling. So we'll weigh out the ingredients. It's important to always read through your recipe as well from start to finish so you know exactly what you're doing. So we have got our two prepared oven trays here and I'm using Baker Glide, but you can use baking paper. I just love this because it's reusable. And then put flour, sugar, ginger, bicarbonate of soda into a large mixing bowl and add the softened butter. So Coco, do you want to start weighing everything out? I will get the butter softening by the oven and a knife for us. In goes the sugar. It's 175 grams of sugar and 100 grams of softened butter. Hold on. A bit more. Keep going. Keep going. A bit more. Slowly, yep, perfect, perfect. Cook is now adding in the bicarbonate of soda and the ginger. So one teaspoon of bicarb and two teaspoons of ginger, which is where they get their name from. In we go. That's perfect, darling. And then we're going to set the scales to zero and pop in a hundred grams of butter. I'm just going to chop it into chunks. It does need to be softened, so it's best to get it out um, in advance. And then Diane, what does it say to do? Rub the butter into the flour with your fingertips until the mix mixture looks looks like fine bread okay so it's easier if you stand on the naughty step for this isn't it and roll your sleeves up Coco has already washed her hands as have i and so she is good to get going perfect darling you go flying in fact i'm going to take it off the scales and get stuck in so it's really important when you're doing breadcrumbs that you really work the butter into the flour and the mixture and um Kiko will show you in a minute exactly how to do that but to begin with it's just getting the butter softened and mixed in Kiko is doing a wonderful job here it's really important that you don't squidge that you just gently rub like this and it does take a good five minutes to do it and have it in fine breadcrumbs. You can whiz it up in a food processor, but I think it's actually really fun for the children. They love getting their hands stuck in and learning the process of making the butter um, and the flour and the sugar come together in fine breadcrumbs like this. Cooks has done a brilliant job and it is, show everybody, pick it up and it's fine breadcrumbs. You love it, don't you? I think it's your favourite bit, isn't it? Yeah. Right, what do we do now? Break an egg into a small bowl and add in the golden syrup and use a fork to beat them. So I have got one egg here and I put here a, um, in fact, it's incredibly hot, a mug of really um, boiling water and I've just been heating my spoon up in there for the golden syrup. I'm going to crack this egg. Or do you want to crack this egg? Or you wash your hands and I'll do this. Could you grab me a fork as well, darling? I'm going to crack my egg into a smooth, a small pudding bowl. And then it is four tablespoons of golden syrup. So it's much easier with a hot spoon because 
Let me show you, thanks, Anne. It runs off. Whereas if the spoon is cold, it doesn't run off, it sticks on there, and you end up in a sticky mess, standing there for ages. So, that's two. Three. And four. I also think that cooking is great for children because you're counting, you're using the scales, you're weighing things out. And so there's lots of different um, elements of learning that come into it, isn't there? Yes. It's not just in the kitchen. Right, I'm going to beat that with a fork. Can you hold that for a minute, darling? I need this. Right. So what does it say to do now? It says, stir in the eggy mixture into the flour with a metal spoon until it makes a soft dough. So, in that goes. Can you give it a good stir? And then once it's come together you can get your hands in, but at the moment if you were to put your hands in there they'd just be covered in syrup and egg. And I think it's time to get my hands in, or are you going to get your hands in? You're going to get your hands in. You're itching too, aren't you? Right. I'm going to scrape that dairy mixture off. Our spoon. Coax is going to get her hands in and I'm going to get my magic mat out. Okay. Go for it. This is my magic mat and it's just brilliant. When I have children that come and cook here with me, everybody has a mat. We put the mat down, we flower the mat, and it just works really, really well. It doesn't matter what kitchen surface you have, you can use these mats on and it just works a treat. Right. I'm just going to sprinkle some flour onto my mat so it's prepared. Do you need any rolling pin? Yeah, we need a rolling pin. Do you want to get that out? Just work this into a ball and then okay, who can roll it out for us? Let's just show everybody. So can you see it's come? Together really well. I'm just going to give it another moment. And this bit's called kneading, kneading the dough. And it's still a little bit sticky, but that's fine. That's why I flour the surface. Coco is flouring her rolling pin. Don't you show everyone how you flour your rolling pin? Because that's a really important thing to do. Otherwise. The dough sticks to the rolling pin and breaks up. So. And now we don't need all this. This will make lots of biscuits. So I'm going to just pull a chunk off for cocoa to use and put that dough in fact and go a bit smaller because we want our biscuits to be rolled quite thinly. So there you are, darling. Make sure it's all well floured. And you want it to be about the size, oh hang on, you've got some dough. You don't want any dough caught in a rolling pin like that and then roll it in. So darling, I turn that over and re-flour underneath. No, 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 hang on. Lift it <clears throat> up like that. Flour under. Pop it down and re-roll and then flour your pin again like this and then roll again. You want it to be about the thickness of a pound coin and evenly as well. We've got our cookie cutters at the ready and there are two sides. There's a sharper edge and a slightly more rounded edge and you want to make sure that the sharper edge goes down and cookie is going to cut out some shapes. Just going to back there. Well done. A firm push down. That's good. And do some more shapes. 
Hoppla. Nu är det min favorit. I've got a um, palette knife which is really handy as well for lifting up the shapes. So I'm going to pick up that back and pop him on the oven tray there. You might, darling, actually get, if you turn that hat up the other way, oh no, hang on, you, you can get one in there as well. And then you cut your shapes out, you fill up your tray. When you put them on the tray, you want to leave a little bit of space between the biscuits because they will spread slightly whilst they're, while they're in the oven and co cooking. Perfect. Well done. Let's get these on the tray and in the oven. So I'm going to use the baking oven of Mayaga, but you can use um, an electric oven at about 180. Um, let me just... We have got our two trays with our biscuits on. So they're going to go in the Arga in the baking oven. So it's about 180 approximately for 10, 10 to 12 minutes, halfway through. So at five minutes, I'm going to swap the trays around. Um, so we're going to put one down at the bottom and one at just above. And then, okay, will you ask Rex at a time? Alexa for five minutes. Five it's minutes. really important um, to always set a timer so you are aware and, and, and you don't burn things. The timer has just gone off so let's have a look at these. That's perfect. So they are golden. I will bring the camera over to show you properly but those are perfect. So I'd be careful that hot oven tray and as are those ones as well. So, very carefully. Can you do them? I think maybe, do you know what? We need to leave them for a couple of minutes in the trays before we take them out, just to cool slightly and settle. So we're gonna leave those for a minute. I shall bring the camera over and show you them. So you make sure you get the right color, because that's key, isn't it? What color is it gonna be? Golden. That's right, golden. These have cooled for a moment and I've brought you over for a closer look but you can see I mean I can now hold those and they are rigid they are golden they are that sort of thickness and we're going to leave them to cool properly on the wire cooling rack here and then we can decorate them but we can't decorate them while we're warm because what happens Coco? It melts. It melts, it melts. the icing melts which is just a disaster so we will let them cool but it doesn't take long. Our biscuits have completely cooled so Coco has got some icing sugar in a bowl here she's just added a little bit of water and she's mixing it into a paste. I am going to put down what are you going to decorate? I'll decorate bat. A bat okay I'm going to go for a ghost to begin with. So let's put these to one side over there. Now I have got um, Dr. Oetker's um, designer icing and I'm just going to get one of these nozzles out for my ghost to start with. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it and um, yeah, Cakes is busy mixing. Darling, I've got the mm -hmm. black there if you want to use um, the end of a teaspoon. So I'm just going to soften this. This is ready to pipe. And I'm just going to go around the edge of my ghost. And I will show you why. Because then it's actually easier when it comes to icing. That um, it doesn't matter if it's runny. It won't slip off the edge. So this is literally forming like a, like a barrier, I suppose, for the icing. I'm just going to go all the way around the edge here. Start again. Try and make the join neat. Not bad. Go around the edge there. I'm going to make some icing into a paste like Coco is. But 
just with plain white for my ghosty. You want your icing sugar to be nice and thick and stiff. And I will show you when we have got to the perfect consistency. So our icings are at perfect consistency. Now this one is easy to do because I have put my barrier of the piped icing round. But irritatingly, they just come, I think in white now, she done and will you get them another spoon as well i'm going to use the back of a spoon to maneuver my icing around my ghost biscuit um you can make up and pipe your own icing but actually just to be quick and cheat it's really great using those but they used to do them in lots of different colors and now i can only find them in white and i don't know if we will find them again but um so I'm going to show you this way and then I'm going to show you the way without the piping as well. So, Coco, you might want to, do you want to finish that? Should we swap, swap <coughs> sides? Swap. No, I'm not. So you push that around and then, I am now reaching over Coco, I've got some edible eyes in this packet. And will you put some eyes on my ghost, darling? And I'm going to yeah. put um, some eyes on the back. So, I have got the black icing and I'm just going to pop it in the middle of the biscuit like this. And then I'm going to use, again, like the cocoa is, like I did on that side, the back of the spoon just to spread it out. But you need to be more careful because I don't have my icing barrier so you just want to be careful that because you don't want it to run over the edge of the biscuit ideally it doesn't matter and when you're you know with children it's about having fun in the kitchen not saying oh no you've got to do it this way let them be creative and explore and experiment with cooking isn't that right kids I'm just going to work this round and then I think I'm going to put some silver balls on this one for eyes and you found some glitter as well, didn't you? Silver. <coughs> yeah, silver. we could use silver glitter as well. Right, how are you getting on? Do you want to put the eyes on now? Yes. Oh, <laughs> licking the spoon. There's yeah. got to be perks in the kitchen, hey? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Right. So now it's our bat done. And now I'm gonna have a go. It looks more glittery and spooky. <laughs> it does look spooky. And now I'm gonna have a go at the witch's hat. Coco and I have had so much fun in the kitchen together filming how to make our Halloween gingers. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. Happy Halloween and have a fabulous weekend.